Hey guys, welcome back. It's Professor Rank, and in this video, we're going to talk about global variables and local variables in the context of functions in C++. So we'll talk about what they are, when you should use them, when you shouldn't use them, and we'll give examples of both. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty guys, so the concept of global variables versus local variables is really a simple one. All you have to remember is that a variable that is defined outside of all functions is a global variable, okay? And any variable that is defined inside a function is a local variable. That's the basics, okay? So let's see an example of both, and then we'll talk about why it's bad to use global variables in general, okay? So first thing we'll do is we'll see an example of a local variable. So we'll just create a function that is going to, you know, add two numbers, just something silly. So we'll call this function add, and it'll accept two integers and uh, return their sum, okay? So we'll have a little prototype for it. We'll have a couple of parameters, and then we'll have our local variable. So, you know, if I'm going to add A plus B, okay, what I want to do is I'll want to um, put their sum in a variable, which I'll call sum. So I have to define that variable, and I'll define that variable, we'll name it sum, and then we'll return it when we're done. So sum is an example of a local variable. Now, as it turns out, the parameters a and b, they're also a form of a local variables, right? Because their scope, that is where they can be accessed uh, in the program is gonna be limited to the function which they're defined. So in this add function, a, b, and sum are all local variables. So let's see an example of that in practice, okay? so. You can use, I'll go ahead and compile this, we'll run it, we'll do a little, we'll do a little example. Okay, so eight and three, you know, just, something, just something silly. Um, <clears throat> oops, not sum, it's not the name, the name isn't sum, it's uh, add. Um, so this function's gonna work, okay? And so we're gonna see 11 uh, on the screen, and you know, there you go. And the, the thing is, how you know that they're local is because you can use sum and you can use a and b in this function, right? But they're defined in add, right? This is its own function. So it has its own scope. So any variables that you define within add can be used by add. They're local to add, all right? So what does that mean? That means that I can't use them in main. So for example, if I did something like this, sum equals two times two, right? I got the red squiggle. Why? Because sum is not defined in main. Okay, sum is local to add. That's its scope. That's where it's defined. So I can't use it in main. If I wanted to use a variable named sum in main, then I'd have to create another variable. Okay, so then I could do that here, right? And then see out sum. Okay, and fine, that works, but those are two separate variables, two separate variables. So this sum belongs to main. This is in the scope of main, okay? And then this sum down here is in the scope of add, okay? In the scope of the add function. And just the primers too, okay? so. You know, if I was to try to say a equals nine, okay, I got the squiggle again because a is local to add, right? It's not, it's not a variable that can be accessed anywhere else other than within add. And so parameters, they're local variables. They, they kind of have a, a special use in that we can assign them values, right? And this is a special case where this eight is going to be copied into the a, but because they're parameters, but you can't directly access them like this on line nine because their scope is add, right? And other way around. So if I was to create a variable called x in main, 
Okay, x belongs to main. So this belongs to main. It's in the scope of main. So I can't then use x inside of the add function because x belongs to main. It's in the scope of main. X is local to main, right? X is out of scope in add because we didn't define a variable um, x in add. Okay, and one other thing, because you know maybe you already noticed, but you see how there's a sum variable here and a sum variable here. As long as variables are in different scopes, you know, defined in different functions, they can have the same name. Um, so I will see a lot of times students will think, you know, when they're first learning functions and scopes and all these sorts of things, that they have to have different names for their variables and their parameters and, and all that sort of um, stuff. But no, as long as it's separate scopes you can use the same names as much as you want so for example main's got a local variable a and add's got a local variable which happens to be a parameter a no problem that's not an issue okay so those are examples of local variables okay so now let's see an example of a global variable so remember local variables variables that are defined in a function and they can be accessed directly from within that function and that's it, right? Other functions can't directly access them, okay? But if you want to have a variable that can be accessed by all functions, then you have to define the variable outside of all functions. So for example, int g, okay? So this is a global variable. Okay. It is defined outside of all functions. It doesn't belong to main and it doesn't belong to add. Therefore, it's accessible by both. Okay. So what does that mean? So what that means is, is I can do something like this. I can say, oh, well, g equals nine. Okay. See, no squiggle because main can access it. And then inside of the add function, I can access it as well. Right. So since it belongs to nobody, it is accessible by everybody okay so main can access it directly and um add can access it directly okay so we're gonna see what 20 right <clears throat> because i passed eight and three to the add function and then we put nine inside of g right here so eight plus three plus nine 20. now that's global variable and there is this is a a uh a special case right so this uh variable g right so you can see that i'm going to see out the contents of g okay there's no squiggles here and you're going to see that we're going to see a value we're going to see zero okay why right what's in what's in g well zero's in g this is a special case normally if you leave variables uninitialized you don't know what's there until you actually put something there but this is a special case with global variables with numbers, by default, they do get initialized to zero, okay? Um, it's still kind of weird, I think, to leave them uninitialized just because it, it looks funky, it's a little confusing. But if you know that rule, um, you know you know that these global variables, they do get initialized to zero. <clears throat> Normally, you can't do that. You can't use a um, an initialized variable and then you know do some kind of operation with it right um because you don't know what's you don't know what's in there so it's it's definitely a, a bad idea and some um compilers they'll even give you or id easily even flag that and they'll say oh you can't you can't do that you know because it's an uninitialized um variable and depending on even with um yeah so here you go right so you got that error message uninitialized local variable i used so because you don't know what's in there okay but we could do that with G, right? Because we do know what's in there. We know what's in there because it gets um, initialized to zero, okay? So that is itself not a problem when you're using um, you know, global variables. Okay, now, last thing to talk about here with, with respect to global variables is that they're a terrible idea to use. Okay, well, next to last, we'll, we'll say one other thing. Um, they're, they're a terrible idea, okay? Uh, generally speaking, never use global variables unless you have a very, very, very good reason, right? Unless there's no other way. 
because, right, let's say that, you know, I've got you know, four different functions. Let's say I've got the add function, I, I added some others in there, like, I don't know, whatever. Okay, and they're all using a global variable. Okay, now your program's running fine. Two years later, you come in and you update one of the functions and you make a mistake. Okay, um, and one of the mistakes that you made with one of those functions was involving the G variable. Okay, and so then there's a bug in there and then you discover the bug some days later and you come back and you're like, okay, now which function's the problem? Right, because if every single function has access to that global variable, then every single function is a is a um, is a possible suspect for being the problem. Okay, uh, if you have a global variable and everyone has access to it, then everybody can mess it up. Okay, so it's better to use local variables um, and use parameters and pass arguments. So that way, if you mess up a particular function, then you know it's gotta be that last function that you modified, right? It just makes it easier to debug because it can't be every single function that, that messed it up. You can, you can kind of narrow down who's the culprit in that way, right? Because if everybody can uh, is dependent upon G, then anybody can be causing the problem, okay? But if you're using a function that is only using local variables, and something goes wrong. So for example, if I'm looking at my add function and I made some mistake, right? And I'm trying to add the numbers and I'm like, oh, um, trying to add eight and three and it's supposed to be um, 11, but oh my gosh, it's nine, okay? G has nothing to do with it, okay? So even though um, main might be using G for something, right? It's not going to be, there's nothing, add can't possibly be uh, having a problem because of that G variable because it's not using it, okay? And it can't be main that's causing the problem for add because they're not sharing that global variable. So global variables in general are a bad idea. Now that being said, there is always an exception to every rule and it is slightly more permissible. And I will, I will still say that it's a bad idea, even in this case to use global constants, right? So you can have something, you know, like this, okay? Um, okay, where you make it, where you make it constant, okay? Now, if you do that, right, you make a constant float, and um, there you go, 0 0.0975. Right, if you make it a constant, okay, um, then, it ensures that you have a little bit of independence between all the different function definitions, right? Because if something goes wrong, it's not because one of your functions inadvertently or incorrectly changed that global constant, okay? Because they can't. Since tax has been initialized and it's a constant, nobody else can mess with it. Nobody else can mess it up, right? So if you have function A, that depends on this constant global variable in, in function B. If something goes wrong with function A, it's not gonna mess up function B, right? Because function B is still using that constant variable. The, the, the Function A can't inadvertently accidentally change that global variable, right? So it is slightly safer, well, it's, it's a lot safer to use a global constant if you're gonna use a global variable at all. Sometimes, very few cases, you, know, you can't avoid it but in general global variables bad idea it's better to pass them as arguments um, you know and just create a, a local variable or something and pass them to functions than to make something global global bad idea but at least now you know what a local variable is what a global variable is how to use them and how to minimize your risk okay Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, and you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. 
leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.